there's in this middle page the evidence and commentary out of zero, one, two, three, four. There's a top row and there's a bottom row. So I want to decide, like, what's the difference with the bottom row and this top row in the commentary? They call it decision rules and scoring notes. Super important. Decision rules and scoring notes at the bottom of the middle page. Okay? All right. It's out of five. A pet three. Yeah, your goal is a three. It's college credit with a three, four, or five on the entire exam. That's what I'm saying. You gotta pull a three or four out of this if possible. So no one should be at a zero, right? There's no one at a zero right now. Huh? No, there's no one at a zero. I would say the difference between a one and a two, I put general evidence for one. I'm seeing a lot of general evidence, meaning, okay, on that checklist that Elvis had on his computer, the one we used for peer editing, mm -hmm. there's a check mark for do you contextualize your rhetorical device? Remember, we talked about that. What does that mean to contextualize it? Uh, isn't there a different um, rhetorical analysis? To contextualize it is to make sure that it's relevant and specific to your example. It's one thing, I mean, some people are just stating repetition. But that's not it. You have to explain the function, the job of repetition, contextualized or connected to your specific evidence. So some of you are just explaining the job of repetition, but not connecting it back to your passage, right? So it's important that you connect the two. If you connect the two, you're gonna be more in the two and three range. But if you separate it out and say, this is repetition, here's my quote, you gotta connect it. Um, and you also have to prove to the reader that you understand the job of your rhetorical device and the impact of the rhetorical device on the writing and on the audience. That's why the three boxes on your chart, guys, will lead you in this direction, 100%, by following them, answering all those questions. Yes, Rupert. Um, have you graded art in the college course? I'm gonna start doing that with your yeah, revision. Really yeah, no, I agree. I didn't wanna do this at first, because mm -hmm. it's just, it's too much. But from now until Christmas break, so all of your revisions, I want to do by Christmas break. Okay, um, by, that, by that Thursday, the 23rd. I'm gonna start as of today, whatever is in my, my Google Classroom turned in, I'm gonna start using this. And I'm, I'm gonna just highlight these, this copy and then hand it to you. Because I really think now you know, so you didn't know what line of reasoning meant before, but now you know. And why it is so powerful. How many times do you see line of reasoning written on this commentary and evidence section. Just kind of skim. I mean, I think it's in every single box, right? Uh, one, a lot. Two, three, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here we have some specific evidence for a two, kind of no line of reasoning. So I know the back table, because I was, I was filming some of their peer editing, they saw a lot of this. They did not see those universal ideas, analogous, similar, dripping down your whole essay. Some of you might be between, you'll get highlights from me, you might have a highlight here, and here, and here. Then you gotta think, well, I would get an average, right? If you're a four, a two, a one, you're probably gonna be in the two range, right? You have to take like the middle road of that. So, again, I'm not a math person, but, so this is specific evidence, and specific line of reasoning, again, it's contextualized to your speech. Um, it's woven in. This is, you have at least one rhetorical device that is connected to the author's purpose and message. So, I think most of you have written like that so far, right? This is multiple rhetorical devices, you know, the three in each paragraph connected to purpose and message. This is a consistent use of evidence integrated with line of reasoning and specific. So 
This is like you're doing it kind of mostly. This is all the time in each of the three body paragraphs. So what do you mean like four is like doing it all? This. So consistent, thank you. Consistent evidence and reasoning in each body paragraph, you create a line of reasoning and it and you contextualize the rhetorical device. You don't just say um, parallelism is the repetition of phrases. Here's my quote, right? You're introducing it at the same time. There's no dictionary definition of your rhetorical device. Oh, You're sorry. hiding your definition in the analysis of the example. Uh, By kind of saying like, you know, in this example, we see, we hear the repeated sounds of blah, blah, blah that create a flow and, you know, capture the audience's attention so that Obama can <coughs> Oh, now I so, Right? You're weaving it into the speech, you're naming the author, you're, you're, you're saying what that rhetorical device does, like what does it do for the reader. So I think, yes, to Nicholas's point, it will help to start grading this um, in that way. Um, questions so far on this top part. So again, it's the progression of consistency, um, how often it's used. Always, always line of reasoning and evidence. At the three and four range, you're going to pick up some three and fours if you integrate to the message and purpose um, of the speech. So a lot of you, again, are doing that really well. All right. This is a lot. Did anybody, I want you to tell me what you highlighted on this one that you felt was important. And I know this is like the tiniest part. Tiniest print ever. What did you, I know some people were highlighting this. Can you tell me something you were highlighting? Oh my God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with one. This one, um, in four, this is this. four. Focus on the importance of specific words and details. So, specific words, that should be highlighted. The way that I have set up the chart is that you should be going back specifically the phrase blah blah, you know, one, two, three words. But you're really, remember, you're really focused on what the words do at the sentence level. How did those words impact the sentence? The, the, that part of the speech, right? We're reading like a writer, not reading like a reader. Yeah, where do you see organized and support? Um, right here? Yeah. yeah. So organize and support what? The argument that Ryan made is because of multiple story things we should add to that. So what are they saying they want right here? Uh, they want like um different 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 of the rhetorical device to get that. Not the rhetorical device, this one's focused on the line of reasoning. So what are they looking for? to prove that you have a line of reasoning here. Multiple supporting claims. Multiple supporting claims. So the first sentence is an 